He turned his back on the window, and sat down at his computer desk, opened his browser, and logged on to Facebook, to write something. This was not illegal, but if the sanction was detected it was reasonably certain that it would be punished, or that at the very least he would be monitored, as a right-wing extremist. Do you have a Facebook? Have you thought about the privacy you put at risk? The Facebook allows users to post their favorite music, books, movies, their address, hometown, phone number, email, clubs, jobs, educational history, birth dates, sexual orientation, interests, daily schedules, exactly how they are related to friends, upload pictures of themselves, and even political affiliations. Its privacy policy even goes so far as to state it also collects information about you from other sources, such as newspapers and instant messaging services. This information is gathered regardless of your use of the website. Think that's scary? The Facebook's term of service is state. By posting member content to any part of the website, you automatically grant, and you represent and warrant that you have the right to grant, to Facebook an irrevocable, perpetual, non-exclusive, transferable, fully paid, worldwide license with the right to sub-license, to use, copy, perform, display, reformat, translate, excerpt, in whole or in part, and distribute such information and content, and to prepare derivative works of, or incorporate into other works, such information and content, and to grant and authorize sub-licenses of the foregoing. Have you seen the Facebook's Pulse feature? Pulse provides statistical trends among universities down to minute details such as percentages of females with conservative views, the student body's top 10 movies, and percentage of students who have read Catcher in the Rye. The so-called privacy policy goes on to say that they may share your information with third parties, including responsible companies with which they have a relationship. Can you think of any marketing group who would pass up buying such valid yet easily collected statistics such as these and others? So maybe they're using us. But is there more? The first venture capital money totaled at $500,000 came to the Facebook from venture capitalist Peter Thiel, founder and former CEO of PayPal. He also serves on the board of radical conservative group Vanguard PAC. Further funding came in the form of $12.7 million from venture capital firm Excel Partners. Excel's manager, James Breyer, was former chair of the National Venture Capital Association. Breyer served on National Venture Capital Association's board with Gilman Louie, CEO of InQtel, a venture capital firm established by the Central Intelligence Agency in 1999. This firm works in various aspects of information technology and intelligence, including, most notably, nurturing data mining technologies. Breyer has also served on the board of BBN Technologies, a research and development firm known for spearheading the ARPANET, or what we know today as the Internet. In October of 2004, Dr. Anita Jones climbed on board BBN, along with Gilman Louie. But what is most interesting is Dr. Jones' experience prior to joining BBN. Jones herself served on the board of directors for InQtel, and was previously the director of defense research and engineering for the U.S. Department of Defense. Her responsibilities included serving as an advisor to the Secretary of Defense and overseeing the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. This goes farther than just the initial appearances. DARPA shot to national fame in 2002 when knowledge of the existence of the Information Awareness Office came to light. The IAO stated its mission was to gather as much information as possible about everyone in a centralized location for easy perusal by the United States government, including though not limited to internet activity, credit card purchase history, airline ticket purchases, car rentals, medical records, educational transcripts, driver's licenses, utility bills, tax returns, and any other available data. All of the above raises more questions than answers. Perhaps if the Facebook wishes to stay ethically sane, it should enact the policy. What happens in the Facebook, stays in the Facebook. He sat back. A sense of complete helplessness had descended upon him. For whom was he writing this post? For the future. For the unborn. His mind pondered for a moment, and then fetched up with a bump against the new speak word. Double think. Double think is the act of simultaneously accepting as correct two mutually contradictory beliefs. It is related to, but distinct from, hypocrisy and neutrality. For example, Obama's health care policy.
I don't need another flu shot. I had a flu shot last year. A swine flu epidemic may be coming. Swine flu shot? Well, I don't know. I've been thinking about it. It could make you very sick. Swine flu? Man, I'm too fast today to catch me. You'll want to be protected. I'm the healthiest 55-year-old you've ever seen. Hey, I play golf every weekend. Get a shot of protection. The swine flu shot. I'm a chemist. I love scientific method. I always have. And when I worked for the drug industry, science was completely abandoned. These drug companies that I, was, that I was interviewing with had no problem telling me, look, we design drugs based on treating symptoms. We don't cure. So that's a business model, okay, that allows you to give a drug to a person for life. They ran out of symptoms to treat. So what did they have to do? The next level of drug advertising is inventing disease. When you run out of symptoms, you don't have any more clientele to market to. So you have to invent disease. I wondered, as a chemist, I'm making these drugs. They're proving deadly in our labs, and they're proving deadly in other labs. Dangerous, ineffective, causing the exact same thing they're supposed to treat. How are they selling them? How are they selling them? And they have the marketing department. Big Pharma has the best marketing department in the world. Geniuses. You simply pay professionals, doctors, professors, psychiatrists, to report that the study showed positive results. You're paying them. You're buying science. Checkbook science. At least 125,000 people dying every year from prescription drugs. You would think that you'd spend more in research to try to offset the death toll. No. Keep going with marketing. Market, market, market. Hypnotize the masses. Hypnotize them and drug them. You have a billion dollar industry making a lot of people sick and profiting on it. Don't take the drug. That puts the patient in the position of power.